ground record is 32 and a quarter thousand, and I think it might be in jeopardy today. Yeah, the 1997 grand final, Newcastle Knights versus Manly. Something I'll never forget. I had a belief, and you know, I actually said this in an interview with uh, Craig Hamilton the week before, or the week leading into it. I, I had a belief that um, the day Newcastle made a grand final was the day they'd win one. It was more than a grand final, it was doing as much as we can for the town that was struggling so much from the earthquake and the closure of BHP. The build up to the game was was extraordinary. Um, the people that got behind the team and gave us uh, so much hope, I think, and momentum had, had as much a part of play in our win as, as did the 17 players out in the field. As we hopped on the bus and we're heading out of town along Newcastle Road out to the Link Road, it was lined with people all waving and uh, had their flags and scarves and whatever else, jerseys on all cheering us out, so it was just an amazing uh, sight really and I guess as players we felt you know, we, we had to win that game because it meant so much to the fans. We get down to Sydney, we stay at the Coogee Beach um, Crown Plaza Hotel. Chief says, come up to my room, I want to have a, a meeting. I was over meetings, but when Chief tells you to do something, you go and do it. So we went up there and crammed about 25 blokes into a hotel room. You can imagine there's a bit of testosterone going. It was, it was tight and it was warm. Um, and he asked us one question. He said, boys, just tell me what it means to you personally tomorrow. It was the most emotional half an hour I can recall. I remember Joey said, there's no way these blokes will beat us tomorrow. And every one of those blokes in that room believed uh, what Joey said because the, the, the electricity in the room right then just gave us such such momentum and such confidence um, on the back of uh, you know, people waving, 25,000 waving us off from, from Marathon Stadium earlier that afternoon. It was just the perfect build up. So Mal, really obviously our coach and, and Mal had, you know, big game experience as a player himself and as a coach coaching England and, and other sides. But, um, you know, he told Chief that a player never gets sent off in a grand final and so Chief went out and that opening 10, 15 minutes of that game, Chief took it upon himself to rip into the Manly side. For the Newcastle side and Manly rush in. They believe Harrigan put a high shot on two feet. Carroll, Harrigan goes into the top of him again. Yeah, that, that last play where Andrew went down the, the blind side and threw it back into Darren Albert, it was. It was almost like it was in slow motion for me. I, you know, watching from the sideline, we saw it on the bench, and then we stood up when Andrew went down the short side, and we thought, "Has he done the wrong thing?" And then all of a sudden, the hole opened up, and you couldn't have a better man than Darren Albert, the quickest bloke in the in the club, if not the NRL. Albert is over. Manly has been beaten by Newcastle on full time. Six seconds to go. Boy, were we about to celebrate. Was Newcastle about to celebrate? It was, it was the party of all parties. Um, getting on that bus, going along the freeway, cars bipping their horns, coming into Walls End, police escort, um, cars lining the street, people lining the streets. It was just surreal to be a part of it. I remember uh, on full time when they, when they won, I just, the first thing I did was just go outside and just listen and you could just hear progressively, you could just hear the, the neighbourhood, like you could hear the suburbs start going off and I thought, this is going to be gigantic. So, um, you know, even though you're not involved, um, it was, it was, you know, it was what we, we as players over the sort of preceding 10 years have been trying to achieve. So then of course the final result, Newcastle 22, Manly 16.